All right, now we're going to talk about using um, our equilibrium constant expressions. Okay, basically there's two different ways that we can use them besides just calculating them. Okay, these are helpful for us. So basically 9.4 uh, talks about using equilibrium constants. So our two different ways that we can use our equilibrium constants is the first way is we're going to predict um, basically kind of the position of equilibrium. So we have to remember our definition of equilibrium was when the rates of the forward and the re reverse directions were equal. That does not mean that the concentrations of our products and reactants are equal. Um, so some of our equilibriums are going to favor our reactants, some will favor products, some can be roughly in the middle. So that's what I mean by this position of equilibrium. Where is that equilibrium favoring? The other way that we can use our equilibrium constants is to calculate the concentrations of our reactants or products at equilibrium. So let's first look at this uh, position of equilibrium. And basically what this is going to do is this is going to use the value of Kc to determine this. Okay. So if Kc is much, much greater than 1, okay, if it's really, really big. What's going to happen is our equilibrium is going to favor our products. Okay, since our equilibrium constant expression is our products over our reactants, Okay, if Kc is much larger than 1, that means that our numerator, okay, the number up top is really big. So that's the concentration of our products is really, really high. Now, if Kc is approximately 1, okay, on the order of 1, then uh, basically the reaction favors neither. Okay. So the concentrations of our reactants and our products are approximately equal. Okay. So that's a little squiggly line just saying it's approximately. Okay. It doesn't mean that it's exactly equal, uh, but in general, um, we're, our equilibrium is fairly equal on both sides. Okay. If our Kc is much, much smaller than 1, that means that we're going to favor the reactants. Okay. If we have a number that's smaller than 1, that denominator is really big which means that our concentration of our reactants is very high, so our position of equilibrium favors our reactants. So if we look at an example, we want to, um, we're going to be given some Kc values. Um, basically, will the reactants or the products be favored?
So go ahead and write those down, pause the video, try them on your own, and then when you have your answers, go ahead and unpause the video and I'll have the solutions. So our first value here, we have 2.1 times 10 to the 11. Okay, times 10 to the 11 is a very large number, as well as our second number here, times 10 to the 8, is very large. So both of these numbers are going to favor the products. Okay, so both of these reactions, if we have KC values of this, uh, we're going to favor the products. Okay. Uh, for these other two numbers, we have negative exponents, so they're very, very small, which means they're going to favor our reactants. For a value of 2.3, yes, it's a little bit bigger than 1, uh, but when we're comparing this value to things like 10 to the 8, 10 to the 11, okay, there, there's a huge difference here. So um, this value here, I would say that this um, basically favors neither. Okay. If you had to say it favored 1, you'd say um, products because it is technically larger than 1, okay, but it's barely favoring the products. Okay. In general, uh, neither the reactants or the products are favored. So that's how we use um, our KC values to determine our position of equilibrium. So next what I want to do is show an example of how to calculate the concentrations at equilibrium. So let's do an example. So we're given some um, information okay, about a KC and a reaction. And our reaction is we're going to uh, combine hydrogen and iodine to form hydrogen iodide. So if our equilibrium mixture, okay, this equilibrium mixture, we have hydrogen iodine and hydrogen iodide. And we know some of the concentrations. We want to find out what the third concentration is. So we have an equilibrium mixture, and we know that we have 0 0.030 molar hydrogen iodide and 0 0.02 molar iodide. Okay, what is the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen? Okay, we know our Kc value is 65. Okay, this temperature portion for us is just extra information. Uh, the equilibrium constant, this value, is dependent on that temperature, but we're not going to be changing temperatures for this class. Um, so anytime you see a temperature, you can go ahead and just ignore it. Okay. So what we want to do first is we're going to have to 
um, write out an equilibrium constant expression. Okay, so we need our KC expression. So we have our reactants, or we want our products, excuse me, over our reactants. So we have our product of hydrogen iodide, and it has a coefficient of 2, so that's raised to the 2 power. And we're going to divide that by our concentration of hydrogen and iodine. Now we need our concentration of H2, and that's what we're after. So I want to solve my KC expression for H2. So I'm going to switch pens so we can see it. We want to get H2 out of the numerator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by H2. That way these will cancel. And then I want H2 by itself over here, so I'm going to divide both sides by Kc. So those cancel. If I rewrite my expression now, I have the concentration of hydrogen is equal to the concentration of hydrogen iodide squared divided by the concentration of I2 times Kc. So I have 0 0.030 squared. That's my concentration of my hydrogen iodide. I'm going to divide that by our concentration of um, iodine. And we have that as 0 0.020. And we're going to multiply that by our Kc value, which is 65. If we calculate that out, we're going to end up with 0 0.00069 molar hydrogen. For more practice with these, um, I would encourage you to work through that extra uh, resource as some practice. Um, working through these concentrations, solving for them, and it's also going to combine the next section that we'll talk about, which is Le Chandelier's principle.